summer thermals can be intimidating, but you have to hold on to them to get high. So I've packed this video with extracts from various courses in my flight academy. In this video, you'll learn how to improve your thermaling turn, why you shouldn't be keeping constant brake pressure, and how to be comfortable with collapses. At the end, I've got a method for helping you with disorientation. So if the idea of summer thermals makes your tummy churn, stick around for the solution. How do you get a really good turn on your paraglider? If you just pull the brake down, you'll see what happens to me. I get lifted over, away from the turn. That's because your harness will tip. This side is generating more lift as you initiate it. It rolls you out of the corner. So it makes this corner really, really wide, which isn't efficient and means you're going to fall out of the thermal quite a lot of the time. So now I'm going to change my turn. I'm going to weight shift one, two, and then I'm going to put the brake in and you'll see we go around a lot faster. Now what I'm doing is I'm controlling with the left brake, the outside brake, to gentle that turn out, to slow it down. If you find that you've done too much, you can soften it out on the outside. But play around with that and you'll get the right balance. You don't need a lot of weight shift. All you need is a slight difference in the height of your carabiners so that your glider knows which way you're directing it. So just a little shift like that is enough. Wait one, two, and turn on three. And that's gonna give you the best active, fast turn that keeps that energy, keeps your airspeed nice and high. If you're just trying to grind everything around on the brakes, you're slowing the glider down and down and down, and it's not that effective. But if you've got weight shift in, keeps the airspeed nice and high, and you don't need much to get it to go around. So I'm gonna go again, one, two, a little bit of brake on the inside, and now I'm on the outside just to slow the wing down, and I can regulate it with that outside brake to get just the perfect circle that I want. Once you're in a balanced turn, you don't really need to do much to adjust it. It's just that initiation phase that really helps. You can, of course, use weight shift the other way if you're trying to widen or flatten out a turn. You don't want it to be so tight. You can then ease off that weight shift and put it back on again to just soften that turn. It's easier to do that than to adjust on the brakes all the time because the brakes change your airspeed and introduce some yaw. So if you're just doing it in weight shift, it's a much softer, finer control. It doesn't destabilize the glider. Find what also helps is to have your thumb on the outside riser. That can give you a very nice stable position that you can just slide your thumb up and down as you're engaging the brake and it stops you rolling around. You might have heard the advice that you should keep a constant brake pressure on your glider to keep it stable and stop getting collapses for active flying for safety. Rubbish! Let's debunk that myth completely. When your glider goes soft, it's quite often due to a lack of airspeed. So your glider will feel a bit soggy when you go into sinking air and turbulence. If you're pulling brakes on at that point, you're slowing the wing down further and you're increasing the sink rate in that sinking air, which will make you continue downwards. It'll increase the risk of a stall and it'll give you generally bad performance and safety. What you want to do when the brakes are soft and yucky is increase your airspeed, make sure that the glider's got good pull so that you're staying flying. Change that active flying feeling to the feeling of the tension in the risers. You want to try and feel the support that the glider is giving you from the leading edge. You can feel that because that's the only thing that's supporting you here. So when it goes soft in the nose, you'll feel this getting a loss of pressure or a loss of lift you'll feel that you're getting dropped. You haven't got that support. When you're getting that feeling, that's when you need to 
come down on the brakes to increase the angle of attack to stop the nose folding in. That's the feeling of the, the nose of the wing almost meeting the airflow and getting soft. And the stage past that is when the nose will fold under and collapse. At that point, you can put on a bit of brake, one, two, like that. Just a second of holding it to keep that nose open and to increase the angle. And then increase the airspeed again. You want to try and continue to generate that lift off the leading edge and that feeling of power. So go for that feeling of power and not for a feeling of constant tension in the brakes. What if my paraglider collapses? How can I fly something that's just going to fold in? Well, you can see that the paraglider will fly fine even if part of it collapsed. It really doesn't matter. You can steer it left and right. And after a while, it should just reinflate just by the air blowing into the leading edge. But you don't have to worry about it because as long as you've got some altitude, you'll just descend faster and whatever's left will still support you. You can fly half of this and it's still a fairly good parachute. So you don't have to fly around worried that the thing is going to fold up and you're going to fall out of the sky because it's impossible to fold the whole thing away. As soon as you go down, the air pressure will just fill out a big section of it and you fly that. Don't worry too much about the collapse bit. You can always lean away from it a little and just steer the glider in circles on this way. If that's all you've got, eventually you can let it open. Glider reinflates, no problem. Don't worry. What's more important is that you don't fly yourself into things. So whatever happens on your glider, steer it away from the terrain. And then you can solve whatever you've got and reinflate it. These things are incredible aircraft. If you'd like to learn more wing control, check out my series on flywithgreg.com. How do you stop disorientation on the paraglider? Well, the first thing is level out from whatever turn you're in. You can hold the back risers to give you a little bit of stability. Just support. Sit up a little bit in your harness. This will automatically clench your tummy muscles, which will help. And then say, shush, through your teeth. That helps because you're compressing your tummy muscles, like doing a sit up and it forces some of the blood up to your head and stops you getting that disorientated, air sick feeling. Then relax into your seat. Relax your shoulders, sink down into your seat and let it support you. That's probably part of the problem is that you're tensed up and you're feeling wobbly. Just let your harness support your weight and now you can ease slightly back again in your harness so that you're in a comfortable position. I keep an eye on the horizon, on a fixed point on the horizon. This helps your brain reset. You've probably got disorientated by looking down and circling. So I'm looking straight out ahead. I've got my back risers for balance and I'm just keeping it straight. I'm looking at one point. That should help a lot. If you're still feeling queasy, Go down and land, don't fight it. Or just get yourself out into open space so that you reduce the stresses that you're dealing with and that might help you get back to some kind of balanced feeling. Once you're comfortable with thermal flying, it becomes a lot of fun. Hook in, hang on and sky out. Learn how thermals really work in the Cloud Engine video, linked here and in the description or dive into my flight academy and level up right now.